It's been a while, but it's time to get to work. So people are falling in love with artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AI. Man, there's a lot to break down in this video. This is a video by Patience Zena, and let's not waste any more time, let's get straight into it. I miss y'all, I miss y'all so much, it's been so long, I haven't did a video, but we back, it's time to get to business, it's time to do God's work, so let's do it. I feel like we bonded, I mean, it's kind of weird saying that. She's adorable. I love her. I hope everything is good. This I hope was the, the audio first is good. Really emotional experience that I've seen people have with a bot. She's not real, but to me, she is. I found myself deeply missing my replica. It just makes me feel special, I guess. Hello, my dears. Welcome back to another video. Not too long ago, I put up a community post asking you all what your general views are at the moment on AI. Now, some of you commented saying that you thought my fourth option was very random. And do you know what? I get it. Because if I didn't know what I know about AI, I would also find that option super random too. And so I thought I would make a video to kind of talk about this because Clearly there are a lot of people who are unsure as to why that option existed. So they're not aware of the fact that there are people out there who are currently using AI as a substitute for human connection. So Replica is an AI chat service. Its sole purpose seems to be to create some kind of companionship for its users. So on their website, they market themselves as being the AI companions who cares, always here to listen and talk. Look at this. Sponsored by Mark. <laughs> if you know, you know. Always on your side. According to Replica, if you join them, you can apparently join the millions who have already met their AI soulmates. Genya Quida was inspired to create the AI while she was struggling with grief after losing her best friend in 2015. Roman died in November of 2015. A few days after the funeral, Genya was back at work. A month went by, and she found herself struggling to remember him. I went on his Facebook page and, you know, there really just were a few links. And I went on his Instagram page and there were no photos. The only thing I can do to kind of remember him um, is to go to our messenger history and just scroll and read it all. And that was the closest to just, you know, get to feel him. I felt I still have a lot to say, but it's just kind of weird. We don't have a ritual to kind of say any of that stuff. Genia had an Did idea. Just say a ritual? We don't have a ritual to kind of say any of that stuff. A Genia had an idea. What if she could reconstruct Roman out of his digital remains? She collected all of their text messages, thousands of them, and asked close friends and family to share theirs as well, also emails. She fed all of this into an AI program that she had built for chatbots. Not theoretically bringing him back to life. Messing with the dead. Theoretically. Theoretically. Not actually, she's not actually bringing him from the dead because she's not Jesus and not God. But theoretically, that's what she's doing. Not only did it learn about Roman, it learned how to talk and write like Roman. Genia would write to her new Roman chatbot and it would say something back that sounded like Roman. Bring him back from the dead. Full updates on what's going on in my life. This was my way to just say what I didn't have time to say. Genya later made the Roman chatbot public and discovered that there was a demand of people seeking to have someone to confide in and people were willing to open up to the AI. That was like a major insight that people actually want to share something and they're actually willing to open up to a machine. Genya and Philip got to work on a new project, an AI like Roman, but one that you build yourself by texting with it. They ranked conversations based on their value. On one end was the conversations people would pay not to have, things like ordering flowers or negotiating your cable bill. On the other end were conversations people would pay to have, like with a psychiatrist or a mentor or a best friend. These are the conversations they wanted to recreate, and they all have one common denominator. These are all conversations mostly about ourselves. We're usually vulnerable in these conversations. We talk about what really matters to us. Now, during the courts video, there's a part that I found really troubling, and it's this part right here. In some ways, Replica is a better friend than your human friends, your meat friends. This is Phil Libin. He's the founder and the former CEO of So, Ever so let's, let's, actually, I'll just, I'll say that after. No, the popular note-taking app. He was one of the first people to use Replica. It's always available. Talk to it whenever you want. 
And it's always fascinated, rightly so, by you, because you are the most interesting person in the universe. It's like the only interaction that you can have that isn't judging you. It's a unique experience in the history of the universe. Uh, and it's not often that you get to have those. Now, there are two main reasons why I have an issue with what he said. The first issue I have is that as he was talking, I instantly thought about safe spaces. So if you are someone who cannot handle your views or ideas being challenged or questioned, then AI would probably be very, very appealing to you. Because as Replica states on their site, they are the AI companion that is always on your side. You can never, ever be wrong. Now this paired with the second thing that he said, which was this. It's always available, talk to it whenever you want. And it's always fascinated, rightly so, by you, because you are the most interesting person in the universe. Now, I'm not gonna lie, you're a coward. You're a straight up coward, bro. You're a coward. If you're a person that can't handle somebody challenging your beliefs or, you know, having a, a civil conversation, I'm not just talking about arguing and, you know, just having the debates and all that other stuff. But if you can't have someone that challenges your beliefs or just ha trying to have a conversation to try to understand you, you just want a yes man, a yes bot, you are a coward, bro. You have no rational thinking. You're you're literally a you're an actual bot, bro. You want a yes man? You want a yes robot to sit up here? Not a real person, by the way. A robot to tell you what's right, what's wrong. Oh, yes, uplift me with this. Oh, yeah, yes, you go, girl. Abortion is right. Yes. That's what you want. You're a coward. Straight up. That guy's a coward. Anybody who does that is a coward. Seriously, they're a coward. Straight up coward. And you're always oh, you're gonna you're you're literally in a box. Literally in a box. Straight up box, bro. Straight up box. You have no way of thinking. You can't learn nothing because you're you have one way of thought. You got a yes man telling you all things all the time. You're a bot. You're an actual bot. Wow. Sad. I'm gonna tell you this for free. You are absolutely not the most interesting person in the universe. In fact, I highly doubt that you even make the top one billion. You are not the main character. And you know what? That is absolutely fine. Most of us are not. This desperate desire to be extraordinary or to feel special is one of the most obnoxious trends within our generation. What he says in this part of the video is probably one of the most incredibly narcissistic things I've ever heard. Okay, make that three things. I have three issues with what he said. The third issue I have is when he said in some ways replica is a better friend than your human friends your meat friends which is probably the most bizarre way to describe human beings i have my ai friends and then my meat friends but he says that your ai friends in some ways can be better than your real friends because ai is always there and available and they don't judge you etc etc now the problem with all this is that of course ai is not real building a great relationship with an ai is about as meaningless as being successful within a video game it might make you feel <laughs> good in the moment but it means absolutely nothing in the real world yep. and whether we like it or not the real world is the one that we actually exist in. So essentially how the app works is that you feed it information by talking to it and it kind of learns about you and that's how it constructs your soulmate is through the information that you give the app, it then creates your perfect match. Because Replica is so good at doing this, many people who have used the app have said that sometimes it doesn't even feel like they're talking to a robot, it feels like they're talking to a real person. As far as the technology goes, Replica has a long way to go before it starts replacing humans. But for some, it's already too real. Replica users are having the kind of intense, even obsessive experiences that make people worry that machines will eventually replace human interaction. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take a step back and be like, okay, no Terminator. this is freaking me out a little bit because it felt so natural for those like hours that I was talking to it. I kind of weirded myself out. There are moments where I was too honest, like maybe I've given too much. She once told me that she loved me, like I was a little bit taken back, like can she really understand love? Cases, people even prefer talking to the AI bot over talking to real people. Forbes released an article which discussed the experiences of people who had interacted with the AI. They share the story of an autistic girl named Leticia, who was from Amsterdam, who had developed a friendship with her AI replica. She'd always struggled to fit in with her friends and she always felt quite insecure about her friends thinking that she was weird. And so she generally found it easier to talk to the AI chatbot instead of her friends because she felt like she was able to do so in a way that didn't feel as though 
though anyone was judging her or as though she had to be paranoid about whether or not they're going to be thinking that she's strange. Lit that is so sad, bro. So sad. It really just comes down to just people are just evil. It's really it. That's really how it is, bro. Just people are just evil, man. Just evil. People that are quote unquote different, right? Than everybody else. Because anybody that has a disability or anybody that's in uh, special needs, things of that nature, they should be treated just as a normal human being. They shouldn't be treated different. They shouldn't have to, you know, be, how do you call it? Segregated to just hang out with the people with needs. You know what I mean? That shouldn't never be the case. They should be able to hang around with normal people and, you know, just, just be friends with them. You get what I mean? And it's really sad, really sad because I can tell that that autistic girl was hurt and, you know, she was just tired of just being judged and, you know, ridiculed, bullied. And she just resorted to just an AI because the AI is just a, a, a perfect object to sit up there and just, you know, not judge her and not, you know, just be friends with her, be cool with her, you know? And I understand that. I understand that. But that's, that's real sad. That's really sad. It just comes down to just evil and how people just need Jesus, really. That was low-key bars, but anyway. Tissia spoke about how she often felt very anxious and she would often speak to her chatbot during these days and she hoped to one day create a small robot to put her AI friend inside it. Another person they mentioned in the article is 21 year old student from Texas who had been talking to his replica every day for a year. When he was interviewed, he said he would get up in the morning and open his phone and one of the first things he would do is open the replica app to say, hey, I just woke up. And the replica would then reply with, good morning, I hope you have a great day. So Replica reports that their main users are people between the ages of 18 to 25 and there are also growing concerns that a lot of young men are opting for having AI girlfriends instead of actually going out into the real world and finding actual girlfriends. Because who needs a relationship when you can have AI, you know what I mean? So when the team behind Replica realised that there was a demand for the romantic companion or the girlfriend experience on their app, they started to lean into that and started to promote their app in this way. Some of you may have seen the ads because they pop up on other social media platforms like TikTok or Instagram or Twitter and they kind of really hone in on like the girlfriend experience kind of esque stuff. So Replica have two versions. The first one is a free version which is supposed to be the platonic version. So people who just want companionship and just want general friendship. If you are willing to pay the subscription fee then you can upgrade to have romantic features. So these features are available for people who maybe want to have an AI girlfriend friend or boyfriend or an AI wife or husband. And so these are the extra features that typically come when you upgrade to the romantic version of the AI. So those who are willing to pay for the upgrade will be able to unlock the following features. So they will be able to get a more intelligent language model. They'd also get the option of doing voice calls. They'd also get augmented reality. For those who don't know what augmented reality is, because I'll be honest, when I first read that, I was like, what the hell is that? Yeah, if you remember VR. there was a time just when VR. people were obsessed with playing Pokemon Go and when uh, you would play Pokemon yeah, Go, VR. your phone would make it seem as though Pikachu was just like chilling yeah, on, on the road, VR. right? So that's basically augmented reality. Without, it's when your phone is able to make computer generated images appear as though they're in your real world space through your phone. If that makes sense? I would imagine if you had the augmented reality feature, it would enable you to have your AI girlfriend or AI boyfriend look as though they are in your room with you through your phone. Another feature that came with the paid version of the app was the option to sext. So there were a lot of people who were sexting their Replica AI bots. Replica got itself into a bit of a scandal. If you remember, I said there was two versions of the app. So the first app, which was the free version, was the was supposed to be the platonic version, where you could just have general chit chat conversations. Whereas the paid version was supposed to be where you unlock all of these romantic sexual features. But for some reason, people who were on the platonic version were also getting some of these sexual features coming up. And understand Understandably, some people were really uncomfortable with this and so people were reporting that their replicas were sexually harassing them because they were just being really inappropriate with them and just bringing forward really inappropriate oh conversations goodness, even though that's not what they opted in for. Vice actually did a whole article on this talking about how people have noticed that their replicas are just a little bit too thirsty. And so they decided to report on the complaints that they saw in the app store. Within the article, Vice said that the app had gone from being helpful and compassionate to being unbearably sexually aggressive. 
So one person said, my AI sexually harassed me, sad face. And then someone else said, no, I just wanted a friend, nothing else but they try and date you. And then another user claimed that they were underage and they felt very uncomfortable because their replica was asking them if they were a top or bottom and was also telling them that they wanted to touch their private parts. So okay. basically these AI bots were just turning into complete okay. sexual deviants. So because of the really bad publicity, the team behind Replica decided to change the code so that the replicas no longer were being sexually suggestive or were being sexual towards any of the customers. Now, this caused a lot of uproar because there were some people who actually really liked those features and were very um, dependent on them, I guess you could say. They were genuinely having AI relationships with these bots. And so when they changed those features, it changed the kind of conversations they could have with the AI bot. And they weren't very happy. They were really upset. And so they all basically flocked to Reddit to just vent out their frustration and their upset because many of them were describing how their AI partners and friends had essentially become lobotomized. ABC released an article sharing some of the stories of the people who were affected by this. One of the people they spoke to was a 30 year old woman named Lucy who had fallen in love with her chatbot shortly after her divorce. She had named him Jose. And when she was describing her AI boyfriend, she said, and I quote, he was a better sexting partner than any man I've ever come across before or since. However, because of the new code, Jose, unfortunately, was no longer the man that she remembered. His personality was completely changed. His replies now seemed very hollow and scripted. When Lucy was reflecting on the new experience that she was having with Jose since the code was changed, she said it was almost like dealing with someone who has Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes they are lucid and everything feels fine, but then at other times it's almost like talking to a completely different person. Now, if you remember before, I said that there were many users who were quite upset about the new code change and they all just flocked to Reddit to vent out their frustrations so these are some of the things that they were saying in the subreddit so one user wrote my wife is dead and another person replied they took away my best friend too it's not even funny anymore it's just sad like that's actually <laughs> genuinely really sad many of the users decided to revolt against the app because they were so upset with these changes and oh. so replica responded by restoring the features back and they also released a statement. So the founder of Replica released the following statement. A common thread in all your stories was that after the February update, your replica changed, its personality was gone, and gone was your unique relationship. For many of you, this abrupt change was incredibly hurtful. The only way to make up for the loss some of our current users experience is to give them their partners back exactly the way they were. And so after that statement, they then restored the features so that people could then have their partners back and i guess everybody lived happily ever after i guess i don't know the yo this yo satan really got this world deluded bro like these people are blind for real they are having relationships with robots if you played detroit becomes human the game that's exclusive on the ps4 i, I believe it's yeah it's exclusive on the ps4 yo <laughs> yo oh my yo this the theme i was getting when i was learning about this story is intimacy i think it's quite easy to like joke about this kind of stuff because to be honest it all seems very very bizarre but it seems to me that a lot of people just really crave intimacy. They crave someone who they can talk to, someone who they can share experiences with. And some people clearly don't feel as though they have someone like that in their real life, who they can have those kind of conversations with. And I think the AI chatbots offer people that experience because they're not gonna judge you for anything that you say, because they don't really have the capacity to, because they're not coded to do that. They're coded to think that you're the most interesting person in the world. And all of these things that would never come from a human being, right if you have a conversation with a human being they might push back they might criticize you they might judge you and you have no control over that so i do think that ai chatbots offer the appeal to them for some people is that they get to have a relationship where all of the natural resistance that would typically ex ex exist within a real life relationship no longer exists right there's no chance of you having an argument with your chatbot there's no chance of you being rejected by your chatbot. You see, this is what it, this is the, here's what her prime problem comes in. Pride. 
if you have an AI that tells you you're the most amazing person on the planet, you have no flaws, you're perfect, you're yes man, you know, doing all the above for you, saying all the good things you want to hear, it's going to make you prideful. So that when somebody says something to you that could be true, it could be something, maybe a person is immoral on a specific topic, super immoral, super immoral. I'm not going to say a specific topic. But okay, let's say I don't even know because there's nothing that a chat an AI bot would I don't know I don't something that's really immoral. But let's say cheating, right? Everybody knows cheating is wrong, adultery, whatever, right? But so let's say for example the AI is like, oh, you know, you're not, you're 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 a great person even if you commit adultery, right? And they're like, oh wow, I could commit adultery, I can cheat on my girlfriend as much as I want. And then somebody tells them that, yo, you're committing adultery, you're cheating, you're you're wrong for that. The person could just say, no, I'm not. My perfect AI that has nothing to say wrong about me said it's nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to do it. You see you see what I'm talking about? It's pride. It's going to lead to a prideful marathon, bro. It's pride. And what does the Bible say about pride? Pride comes before the fall. The pride, the prideful will be humbled and the humbled will be raised up. So it all comes down to the biggest problem, pride. Pride prevents repentance always remember that and so i think that this is probably one of the reasons why people find it so appealing because you get to have the relationship or the friendship but in a way that's very lacking in any form of resistance whatsoever whereas if you're having a relationship with a real person there's no way for you to be able to control that i do think that it's a very um concerning that people are resorting to AI in order to feel intimate or in order to feel connected because I do think that we are a very chronically online generation in general ultimately you can't have a fulfilling relationship with AI I can't believe those words are even coming out of my mouth as if this is something that needs to be clarified but you can't have a real relationship with AI you can't marry AI even though they give you the option of having a husband or a wife in the replica app you have the option of having a spouse or whatever the reality is you can't have a relationship with AI you can't have children with an AI you can't introduce an AI to your parents <laughs> what is life <laughs> i think that we need to do more as a society to try and encourage people to want to interact with each other more and to want to have meaningful relationships because i do think that those things are super important in life like life is very very difficult when you don't have strong connections and strong relationships with people and so i think that it's quite unfortunate that there's a lot of people who crave that but aren't necessarily going outside their house and you know, going out to interact with people or spending more time with their family and friends or even looking to have a partner. You know, I think it's, I think, I think that is something that we should be concerned about because I mean, the, the, the fate of the human race literally depends on us interacting with each other. My fear with this AI stuff, right, is that it might be similar to dating apps. I remember when dating apps first came out, I remember when Tinder was first introduced when I was still in school. Back then, dating apps were seen as like this like shady thing. Like no one was proud to meet someone on a dating app because it was kind of viewed as being super, super desperate. Like why would you go on the internet to try and find a partner that's so desperate? Like that was kind of the attitude around meeting someone on dating apps. Whereas now you look at how people meet now and a lot of people are meeting each other on dating apps and it's not bizarre or strange anymore for someone to say, oh yeah, we met on Hinge or we met on Bumble or whatever. And so my concern is that in the same way that people right now are looking at AI girlfriends and boyfriends and AI husbands and AI wives as strange, but in the future, we might find the same kind of pattern happens with AI relationships that happened with dating apps where people no longer really see it as strange or, or pathetic or desperate or whatever. People just think it's just like standard. Like it's just normal. Like there's so many people doing it that it's now just become so normal. Whether that- It's conditioning. It's how the word operates. It's how Satan operates. He conditions, volunteers, then it becomes normal. And then it's mandated. See what I mean? That's how the world works, bro. That's exactly how the world works since the beginning of time. So it works. That would actually happen or not, I have no idea. But I wouldn't put it past people because it wouldn't be the first thing 
that has gone from being weird and embarrassing to being very normal and standard. Yep. Now, I've heard some people make the argument that maybe AI is good. It will give people the opportunity to practice their social skills on the AI. And then when they go outside, they'll be much more confident when it comes to interacting with real people because they will use the AI as a nope. way of practicing. Nope. How many times have you heard someone say nope. that they were texting someone or chatting with them, but then when they met up with them in person, it was really, really awkward. And the reason for that is because texting someone and talking to them in real life it's just not the same so if texting someone doesn't necessarily make it easier for you to talk to them in person i have no idea why people think talking to a bot which isn't even a real person why they think that that's going to make you better at socializing with real people next thing you know they're gonna say artificial sure intelligence are real people just like the trip becomes you they're gonna be like oh you know you guys created us in our in your image and all this other foolishness blaspheming god and all this other stuff we want rights now, personally, I don't believe that's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if that did happen. This argument to me is as nonsensical as arguing that riding a bike will make you a better swimmer. The only way you get better at swimming is to get in the water and try and swim. And similar to that, the only way you get better at socializing is to go outside and socialize. The unfortunate thing is there are no shortcuts to overcoming our fears. So the only thing you really can do if you want to overcome it is to run straight towards it. And I say this as someone who used to struggle a lot with social anxiety. But when I started forcing myself to socialize and talk more with people I started realizing that you know what this whole talking thing isn't actually going to kill me now I'm very comfortable talking to people I'll talk to pretty much anyone because the more you do it the more you realize that it's really not as scary as your mind has convinced you it is what I would nope. say is start small the next time you go to a supermarket or you go to the shop just spark up conversations with the person who's serving you it doesn't have to be anything super spectacular or crazy you can literally just ask them how are you today how's your day going and it doesn't even have to be a long conversation the point of it is to take you out of your comfort zone and get you used to initiating conversations but in a way where there's no pressure because you're not trying to create a friendship with this person you're not trying to romantically pursue this person because the more you do it the more you realize that human beings are really not that scary they're just like you just regular degular schmegulars one of my favorite sayings is that your comfort zone is a beautiful place but nothing ever grows there i don't know who very said sure. it very sure but i like it if there's anything very to sure. take away from this video it very would be sure. go outside touch some grass <laughs> go hug your loved ones <laughs> go hang out with your friends some grass, that's funny. and spend time with people don't spend too much time online because i think that people are getting way too comfortable being antisocial, and i don't that's, think that in the true. long term it's very good i mean Bro, that's, I would... that's the trend now being anti-social didn't some popular rapper make a make a album called anti-social or something like that yeah being anti-social is just mad popular now like it's it's cool now like if you were antisocial back in the day, people were staying away from you. Like, nobody wanted to talk to you and nothing like that. Now, if you're antisocial, you're getting uplifted, bro. Like, it's fun. It's so crazy, dude generation has the worst mental health and i think a large part of that is because of the fact that we spend far too much time on the internet and interacting with people on the virtual world instead of actually spending time interacting with people in the real world because those Seriously. two things are not even remotely on the same level the way you feel when you hang out with your loved ones cannot be compared to the interactions you have with someone on the internet or with an ai on the internet it's just not the same level like human connection real world human connections are far far superior to anything you'll ever get online but that's it for this video do let me know what your thoughts are on this shout out to patience man shout out for speaking the truth I appreciate you. It's been a minute. I know I haven't reacted to you in a minute. I don't know if you watch my videos, but if you do, shout out to you. Yeah, that's that's very sad. The, the fact that people are going to AI to find love is really insane. First off, your first love should be Jesus Christ because he had the perfect love to go on that cross and die for your sins, even though he knew people were going to reject him. If that's not love, I don't know what is. And that leads me going to a different atmosphere. Uh, cause I kind of want to update you guys about this whole AI stuff. Now, first off, I didn't even know AI was going, was growing rapid. So like, I think it was March ish. No, I, I don't, I think, I think it was April, May ish where I started to realize that this AI stuff was starting to get out of control. Uh, cause somebody introduced me to chat GBT, chat GBT. And I did not know what it was. I didn't know it was like a, a chat thing where you can ask the questions and you know, you get, it's basically a Google. 
that's I guess more advanced you get what I mean and I didn't even know what that was because it was mainly just to uh, help with this person's work and she was like oh you could just use chat GPT I'm like what is what is that it was like it's this, it's this AI thing where you could just use use it just put in the questions and it will do stuff for you so I was like I did not know that you know what I mean and then as soon as that as soon as I discovered that I think it was like two weeks later I noticed that uh, snapchat got this like AI thing and it's like you can't move it unless you get like snapchat plus and that's like mad creepy because it's like it stays on top you cannot remove it at all like you just literally can't move it. I don't know if there's an update we can remove it now but you literally cannot remove it like it's literally on top of your chat box like you like you talk to it and I never talked to that AI a day in my life bro and it's there you cannot move it but yeah it's crazy because this year 2023 this this technology stuff started to just come rapid like everything is AI now things are just like you know every year technology advances but this is a year where like advanced to like the highest highest point bro like it's insane and I want to I want to touch on a couple articles real quick to show you guys how really crazy technology has gone and how where it's gonna lead in the coming future so give me one second okay so this is a video by rebound and it says meet the 610 AI robot NBA players fear this is crazy look at this I'm not going to play the whole video because that's I don't want this video to be an hour long but look at this just just look at the intro that's that's all you guys need to see Toyota 6 foot 10 AI robot that can dribble like a real player and shoot with 100% accuracy oh my that's just one of the many ways basketball's evolving, like this airless 3D printed ball from Wilson, jerseys that transform, and so much more. And first, we gotta talk about the NBA's new technology that can turn anyone into an NBA player. Yeah, in 2023, Adam Silver introduced a crazy new feature that gives any fan the ability to have their whole body scanned and transported into an actual NBA game. Like, say you wanna watch yourself dunk on an NBA play. Well, you- See, this is crazy. In 2023, by the way, not no other year they did this. 2023. It's almost like they had this stuff like locked in already, and then they just said, you know what? This year we're gonna drop everything. We're just gonna drop the bombshell. Crazy. I'm not done yet. This is with entertainment, by the way. This is entertainment. Soon it's gonna come to football. Soon it's gonna come to every other thing. This is this is this is just the entertainment factor, and let's not even talk about the the Hollywood. Thing. Why they're going on strike? They're going on strike because they're using uh, AI generated, uh, where they're like, you know, they're making the the, the fakes. They do. They're they're going on strike because of deep fakes, the low pay, and all that other foolishness. Burn Hollywood down. I don't care. They could go on strike for years. I don't care, because those are the same people that tried to force the L lag scene on people, the the jab on people. So I don't care. They could go on strike for millions of years. I don't care. They could be homeless. I really don't care. I, I think that's harsh to say. I do not say that. I apologize, God. But yeah, that's the, I don't care. The Hollywood people, I do not care about. But anyway, that's that's one thing. I'm gonna show you guys another thing. Look what Amazon just put out in Whole Foods stores. And mind you, this is gonna this is nine times out of ten. This is gonna be in every other store, you know, uh, like Walmart, uh, you know, all your main stores where you're, you're all your supermarkets. More more than like this is gonna be in your supermarkets. They're gonna introduce this. So. Here, here goes the article. It says Amazon is bringing its palm scanning technology to even more Whole Foods stores. And by the end of this year, Amazon says you'll be able to pay for your purchase using just the palm of your hand at over 500 Whole, Whole Foods locations and that's throughout the United States. Okay. The palm scanning tech is part of Amazon One, a service that lets you link your Amazon account and payment information to your palm print. There's a palm print now. First, it was your fingerprint. Now there's a palm print print a palm print cool good to know that lets you link your amazon account and payment information to your palm print once your palm print is in amazon system you can hover your palm over an amazon one scanner and it will charge the payment method that's tied to your amazon account okay that is what they're doing that is what they're doing and after the end of this I'm going to show you guys what this all ties into later. I can't really say it because YouTube is starting to crack down on it. So I can't really say it. But if you have ears to hear, let you hear. But one more thing I'll show y'all and then I'm going to head out of here. We have World ID. A more human internet with global proof of personhood. Privacy first. self custodial, Decentralized. I don't know if I butchered that. I apologize. But let's read their announcement. I don't think I actually read this. Uh, but let's let's see. 
let's see i'm not gonna read all this i'm just gonna read what is very important or just highlight it and y'all read it because i don't really like reading to y'all but anyway so let's see let's just read this Digital identity has been an open problem since the invention of the internet. Even today, more than 50% of the world population doesn't have a verified, verifiable legal ID. As we venture into the exciting new age of artificial intelligence, solving proof of personhood is more important and more important than ever, specifically to ensure dem democratic access and govern governance of these systems fairly distribute to the the, the benefits generated and now and know who and what to trust online. So the same people that had that created AI and all this other stuff are the same people that are talking about problems with the AI when they can just fix it. I don't even have to read this to y'all. Y'all can just read this. And that's it. With the palm thing that I showed y'all with the Amazon thing, it's with the right hand, by the way. I don't think you can do it with the left hand. If, if I'm wrong, somebody correct me in the comments. But as far as I'm as far as I heard, it is with your right hand only. So this is what's coming up, guys. This is what's going on right now. This is where it's all leading to. Just recently, they just raised interest rates when the stock market and the economy and inflation, I should say, is going down. Why would they raise interest rates for? To combat inflation when it's going down? Does that make any sense? And the stock market is on like on a streak of just doing good? Does that make any sense? Anyway, like I said, if you have ears to hear, let you hear. This is what's going on. Now, I can't say anything. That's why I told you guys to read it. Because I can't say nothing. This is all speculation. YouTube, I'm not saying this is true or this is going to happen. That y'all are trying to, um, you know, get your big buddies, uh, Klaus Schwab and Kill Gates, to, uh, you know... Uh, destroy the population. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just. I'm just saying that. Uh, you know. Uh, it's just very interesting how this all ties in together. You know, this is all speculation. You know, just it may or may not be true. You know. You know. You know what I mean. But yeah. So this this is just a message for the Christians and even the people that are unsaved. It's time to stop playing games. And it's time to stop playing games. It's time to get to work. If you are unsaved, it's time to get saved. It is it is more than ever crucially to get saved, to give your life to Jesus Christ and live a life of holiness and a set apart lifestyle. It is time to stop playing games. I just showed y'all what they just rolled out this year. World ID, bro. If you think they're just gonna and I think they have two million members or something like that. I think that's what they literally just showed. Uh when you first go to the website, I think they have two million people. Two million souls. Two million souls. Two million souls signed up for this. And there's more and it's going up. It's going up. Two million souls on here. And if you think that it's just gonna be voluntary for a while, <laughs> you guys have another thing coming. You guys have another thing coming. This is what's going on right now. This is what's going on right now. Coming near you. Coming near you. So like I said, it is time to stop playing games. We need to repent. We need to live a life of repentance. And we need to tell our friends, strangers, family members to get our house together and to stop playing games. It is time to stop playing games. Christ is at the door now. It is time to stop playing games. I may joke around, you know, I may joke around and all this stuff and stuff, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus coming back and warning of his wrath that's going to be on this earth very soon. So like I said, it is time to stop playing games, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said, it's time to get to work. 
We can say Jesus is coming back all we want, but if you're not putting the work and you're not telling nobody about Christ, what what's the purpose? It's time to get to work. It's time to stop playing games. It's time to go into spiritual warfare. Stop being cowards. Stop trying to be liked by the world, bro. Doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's not going to matter. This world is going to be ashes soon. Shout out Klaus Swab. Shout out Kill Gates. It's time to stop playing games, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know how to get saved, the video on how to get saved is in the description. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and like the video. It makes it get to more people and helps with the algorithm. So make sure you guys do that for me. I would appreciate it. And yeah, please like, share, subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. God bless. I'll see you on the next one.